Hi everyone, this is Kevin from CXC Tutor, and in today's video lecture, I want to go through the topic of logic gates. Now, logic gates are one of those topics that is more or less not emphasized in the CSEC physics exam, but every now and then you see a few questions popping up which tend to give students some trouble as they're caught off guard. Now, logic gates fall under section 5 of the electricity and magnetism section of the CSEC physics syllabus and by the end of this lecture I hope that you guys are able to understand how logic gates are used in physics and electronics. We're going to go through the seven basic types of logic gates as well as maybe attempt some questions related to logic gates. Now what are logic gates? The concept of logic itself is present in physics, electronics, and even in higher level mathematics. A logic gate is an elementary building block of a digital circuit which allows a signal to pass through it or stops it given that a certain logical condition is satisfied. Most logic gates have two inputs and one output, and at a given moment, every terminal is in one of two binary conditions. You know, binary refers to 1 or 0, 1 representing high, 0 representing low, and they are characterized by differences in voltages. The logic state of a terminal can and generally does change often as the circuit processes data. In most logic gates, the low state is approximately 0 volts, while the high state is approximately 5 volts. There are seven basic logic gates not and or nand nor x or and x nor we look at them individually the first gate is the not gate this is the most basic type of gate because it simply negates whatever the input is so if your input is zero the gate would invert that input and produce an output of one if your input is 1, you negate that input and therefore you produce the opposite which is 0. This is the basic symbol of a NOT gate. And the next gate is the AND gate. This logic gate has two inputs and produces one output. The output is 1 when both inputs are also high. Otherwise the value for the output is zero for low and below we have what is called a truth table which can show you the general logic behind the AND gate. You have zero zero for input produces a zero for output. You have zero one produces another zero, one zero producing another zero. The only instance where you have an output of one is when both signals coming in have input of one. In summary this is what an AND gate looks like. You have the A and B terminals, 0, 0 produces a 0, 0, 1 produces another 0, 1, 0 is also 0, but 1, 1 produces a 1. This is the AND gate. The next gate on our list is the OR gate. This logic gate also has two inputs and one output. The output is 1 or high if either both of the inputs are high. The output is zero low only if both inputs are low. Here in the corner we have the symbol for the OR gate and the, the truth table is as follows. If you have a zero and a zero, you should also get a zero. If you have a zero and one, based on the logic of OR, you should produce a one because B is one. For the third one, A is 1 and B is 0, therefore the, my output should be 1. And finally, since both outputs are 1, I should also get a 1. The next gate is the NAND gate. The N refers to the negation of an AND gate. In other words, if you combine a AND gate with a NOT gate, you get what is called a NAND gate. Right, so this is the opposite of an AND gate, where the output is low only when both inputs are high. So looking at our truth table, you can see that your outputs are 1, with the exception of the last one, where you have 
two inputs being high, which gives you an output of zero. In summary, this is what an AND gate looks like. You have, it looks like an AND gate with a little zero on the, on the end of it that represents the negation. So you have both terminals A and B, and my output is Y. For zero, zero, you have one. For zero, one, you have one. One, zero, you have one. And one, one, you have an output of zero. Moving on to the next gate, you have a NOR gate. This logic gate is a combination of an OR gate and a NOT gate, and therefore it is the opposite of an OR gate. Your output is high only if both of your inputs are low or zero. So looking at our truth table, 0, 0 should give me a 1, 0, 1 should give me 0, 1, 0 should give me 0, and 1, 1 should give me 0. So in other words, you will only have a high output when both of your inputs are zero. The next gate on our list is the XOR gate. The X represents exclusive OR. So this is a type of OR gate with a particular criteria. The output is one or high if either but not both inputs are also high. Conversely, the output is zero if both inputs are low or if both inputs are high. So this is the symbol for the XOR gate. And as follows, if you have an input of zero for A and an input of zero for B, your output should also be zero. If you have an input of zero for A and an input of one for B, your output will be one. Likewise, your output will be one for the third column as well. For the last column, your output will be zero because you have one and one as your inputs. This is an XOR gate. The last and final gate on our list will be the XNOR gate. This logic gate is a combination of an XOR gate followed by an inverter or NOT gate. For this particular gate, your output is high only if both of your inputs are the same. So for this one, zero, zero should give me one, and one, one should also give me one. Anything else would give me zero. Now, in conclusion, by using a combination of logic gates, complex operations can be performed. In theory, there is no limit to the number of gates that can be arranged together in a single device. But in practice, there is a limit to how many components that can be packed into a given physical space. The rays of logic gates are found in many, many digital integrated circuits, and as technology advances, the required physical volume for each individual logic gate decreases, and overall devices become smaller and capable of more complicated operations at an increased speed. So for those of you who plan on studying electronics, please pay attention to your logic gates as they will help you to make more and more complex digital circuits. Now in terms of past paper questions with logic gates, I saw that they came up in 2005 and 2010 paper two. Now I'm not certain if they came in last year's paper 2015, and we will not know for sure if they will come in 2016 paper, but hopefully by the end of this video, you guys are a little more comfortable dealing with logic gates. And in following videos, I may go through the very two questions that I have mentioned here. Now, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like, share, and comment, and stay tuned for more video lectures like this. Thank you for watching.